Now I've been using the National Early Warning Score as a track and trigger system in hospital practice for some years now, so I thought I'd come back and give you an update of how it's working out for us practically. So patient label, it's John Campbell today that we're thinking about. Normally this would be a sticky label with the patient's name, address, date of birth, NHS number on it. And it's the 20th of the 9th today and it's 1300. Now we always want to use the 24 hour clock system so we don't get confused between AMs and uh, PMs. And first of all, the parameter here is respiratory rate. Now anything that's white doesn't score, anything that's coloured does score. So between 12 and 20 breaths per minute, which of course we need to always have our little watch around with us for. These are dirt cheap these days, I think I paid about 99p for that. But very handy to have that in your pocket, just to uh, take respiratory rates. Now between 12 and 20 we see is not scoring. But if it's 21 to 24, if it's fast, then that's going to score a two, because that's the key, that yellow is a two. And if it's above 25, that's going to score a three. If the respiratory rate is nine to 11, we see that's a green color, and that scores a one. And if the respiratory rate is between, is less than eight, um, that's gonna score a red, so that, again, that's a three. So we would write those parameters in there. So let's suppose my respiratory rate is relatively normal. It's 14 at the moment. Going on down, we come to oxygen saturations. Now oxygen saturations, again, they can be 96 to 100 is considered normal. Low if the patient's got chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, we'll accept uh, perhaps 88 to 92% saturations there. But for normal people, we expect 96, 97, 98, 99 to be allowed about the level we, uh, we would expect. So let's say mine's 97 today, which it was last time I checked it. Now, green would be 94 to 95, and we see that scores a, a 1. Yellow would be 92 to 93% oxygen saturations, and we see that scores a 2, if that comes up. Red would be anything less than 91. But of course, we need to know if the patient's on oxygen or not. And if the patient's on oxygen, that scores a two. So if the patient's on two liters of oxygen, that scores a two. But at the moment I'm on room air, so I'm just gonna put RA in there. Now, if the patient is not on oxygen, don't forget to put room air in there. Otherwise, we're not sure. If someone's picking this up, they might not be sure. Going on down to temperature, again we see the temperature here is acceptable between 36 and 38 without scoring. Last time I took my temperature it was 36.6, uh, I'll write that in there at that level. And you can see I'm writing it at about the level where, where it is. Now in the old days when we did TPRBP, temperature pulse respiration, we always put dots in there so we could get a trend, but now we use the numbers themselves to be more accurate and to get a trend. And again, we can see 38 to 39 would score a green, which is a one on the new score, and above 39 would score a two on the new score. Now, going on to uh, blood pressure. New score for blood pressure. Now, the new score for blood pressure uses the systolic blood pressure. So in terms of scoring, whether it's in here or in any of these, we're talking about the systolic blood pressure. So the diastolic blood pressure is not really a criteria for news, although we would need to use our clinical initiative from time to time. The last time I took my blood pressure was 125, one, two, five, over 75. And again, you note I'm writing in the figure, one, two, five at the right place, 75 there at the right place. That's the systolic, that's the diastolic. And we notice that the 125 is well into the white, so it's not scoring. So a systolic blood pressure above 220 would score a three. A systolic blood pressure 
of between 100 and 110 would score a 1. A systolic blood pressure of 90 to 100 would score a 2. And a systolic blood pressure below 90 would score a 3. Moving on to heart rate. So again, we see the normal heart rate is considered to be 50 to 90 on the, on the news criteria. We normally define a, a sinus rhythms between 60 and 100, but these are the criteria that the Royal College of Physicians have come up with. And they, they, they do work in practice. So last time I took my heart rate, it was 78. So that's uh, 78 there. That's where the 78 will go. Instead of the dot, we put it in that place. And we notice that between 90 and 50 is okay. 90 to 110 beats per minute would score a green, which is a 1. 110 to 130 would score a yellow, which is 2. And above 130 would score a, a 3. And it's the same for the slow heart rate conditions, as we see. 40 to 50 would score a 1. Less than 40 would score a 3. Now we move on to uh, level of alertness. And the scale we use here is A, B, P, U. Are they alert? Are they responsive to voice? Are they responsive to pain? Or are they unresponsive? So at the moment I'm alert, so I'll put an A in there for me. And now I can add up my total news score. Oh no, I can't, because I haven't done my blood sugar. Last time I did my blood sugar, it was 5.6 millimoles of glucose per litre, which is in a, a normal range. 4 to 8 is roughly the parameters there that we typically see. Now I can add this up. So here, I get a 0 for that. I get a 0 for that, because it's in the white. I'm on room air. If I'd been on oxygen, that would have scored 2, but I'm on room air, so it doesn't. My temperature is 36.6, which is in the white. My systolic blood pressure is 125, which is in the white, so that doesn't score. My heart rate is 78, which is in the white, so that doesn't score. So that gives me a total new score of 0. But then I need to go down and just finish off the rest of it. Pain out of 0 out of 10 at the moment. I'm glad to say I'm not in pain, so I'll get a 0 for that. I haven't passed urine in the past hour, so that's actually a 0. Although that can be normal because, of course, urine will accumulate in the bladder. Now, monitoring frequency. I'm not too worried about me at the moment. So I think I put myself on 4 hourly OBS. So I'll do OBS every 4 hourly. At the moment, I don't have an escalation plan. And then I'll sign to say I've taken these observations. So you see I've completed every single box. Don't leave any bits uncompleted. The bits that are often left uncompleted are sometimes the time. Very often the oxygen or the room air that the patient on is incomplete. Sometimes people don't do the um, AVPU score. We don't always do the blood sugar, of course. It's only if we happen to test it that we do the blood sugar. Although with the advent of non-invasive blood glucose monitoring, that will be a more common observation. And then we always add up the total score. Now, if the total score is greater than one, we'll need a registered nurse to assess that and to sign it at the bottom. But given that my score was zero at the moment, I don't need to get the staff nurse to assess that because I'm quite happy with those parameters. So that's the first part of this video on normal recording of news. And of course, what we want to do is look at trends. So for example, if my saturations were going down, that would form a trend. Or if my respiratory rates were going up, that would form a trend if the respiratory rates were going up. Or if my temperature was changing, that could form a trend. Or if my blood pressure was dropping, that could form a trend and should ring alarm bells, especially if it's going into any of the colours. Heart rate again, what is the trend? Is it becoming progressively faster or progressively slower? And what about my level of alertness? Is it fluctuating? Sometimes am I only responding to voice? And bear in mind the other parameters, always considering the possibility that I might be in pain. Always ask me if I'm in pain, because pain is what the patient says it is. 
existing when the patient says it does. So that's the first basic introductory part to the new score. What we're going to look at next in the next clip is what highs and lows can occur in each of these parameters and what is the clinical significance and causes of possible alterations in any of these news parameters.